Hello. Hi, Maddie. Can you hear me? Hi, Maddie. Hi. Hi, Kathy. How are you doing? Good. How are you? Good. Can you, can you see that poll? Yes, ma'am. Yeah? Okay. Hi. How are you? Can you hear me? Hi. <laughs> oh, sorry. <laughs> Good. 
I'm trying to answer the poll. Ah, oh, great. Perfect. <laughs> Gives you something to do while we're waiting. <laughs> Maddie, I love your wearing your U of H hat. Oh, thank you. Carly, you, you've got A&M colors on, so we'll... Yeah. Ah. <laughs> <laughs> Perfect. Um, are y'all zooming with with other uh classes and stuff uh, yes yeah so you know how to use zoom yeah <laughs> took me a while but <laughs> I'm there. <laughs> Someone said they hadn't heard the word Zoom forever, and now all of a sudden it's in every single conversation, and everybody's trying to learn it madly. Yeah, at first I was <laughs> like, what's that? And, like, I had a friend tell me that it was, like, Skype, but, like, educational, and I was like, oh, okay. <laughs> it is, it's crazy. It is, uh, the learning curve is absolutely unbelievable in all of it you should you you should teach me i should get on one-on-one -on -one with you and you can teach me how to use it <laughs> i'm not a pro i'm still learning <laughs> i'm still learning my way around it it yeah it is a little interesting so so you guys probably haven't met deja she's uh down in, Hi. I don't know how y'all have your screen, but she's down the corner. So Deja started working with us in December um, and she, uh, I'll let you introduce yourself when we, I don't, <laughs> but it's, she went to Southern and she went to Willow Ridge. So. Oh, hey, Charisma. This is, Carla, this is a fun thing, because you can see how long everybody's internet's taken to connect to the Never. audio. <laughs> <laughs> Hi, Charisma. Hey, how are you? <laughs> Maybe? Let's see. <laughs> so if you can hear us great there's um you have a mute button on and off you can mute yourself um up in the upper right corner and then there's a poll you can take hey gladys there we go. <laughs> hey. Hey, Brisa. Hi, Natalie. Hey, Gladys. Can you uh, chat with Charisma and just see, because she's to see quiet. how she's, if she can hear us. Because our government structure is so fragmented. You know, different states to need different things. That is. Hey, Elizabeth. Federal government and national leadership. And it is lacking. It is up to state and local governments to regulate, encourage, discourage human behavior. So if y'all are there, if you can write your name in the chat box, uh, write your name in the chat box and what school you're at so that maybe y'all can connect. Hey, Elizabeth. Hi. Hi. Hi, Natalie. Hi, 
wait for Bree to get on. Hey, Jacqueline. Oh, can y'all still see the poll? Or do I need to bring it up? <laughs> I think you can um, bring it up. I didn't see it. Can you can you click the poll button at the bottom for you and see it? Oh yeah. Yeah. Okay. okay. How are you, Jacqueline? Good. Good, good, good. I wonder if Bree's having trouble getting on. I'm sure some of y'all have, um, I was talking to Carla, y'all have done Zoom. That's the new, the new it word. Um, so we were just, we were, we're trying this instead of Instagram Live. Um, so I know, Brisa, you're at home. I mean, you're at school. Is everyone else at home? Yes. Yeah. <laughs> yes. <laughs> So how is that going with trying to figure out how to study being online and at home? Um, I feel like for me, it works out. Like I'm used to online classes, so it's not that big of a problem for me. And how about every other people? Are, is this your first online class you've had to deal with? No, I feel like I'm kind of used to the online format, so I think I should. Is, uh, so if you haven't taken an online class before, what's the hardest thing? What was the question? If you haven't taken an online class before, what's the hardest thing about getting being online? I mean, I'm assuming just keeping track of what's due. Like, I know, well, I had online classes, but like two of my classes that were in person, um, they sent us new syllabus, they kept emailing us, professors, like, uh, we keep pushing assignments back, but then like, as things got uh, progressively worse, like they would be like, well, we pushed them back, we set a new syllabus, um, just make sure you watch the videos they sent from me at least they were like watch the videos and yeah so far it's just keeping track of what is actually due, due a couple of days. yeah so are your um, teachers responsive to like when you're talking to them or trying to get them are, are they responding well to you or are they um, having are they also in a learning curve of trying to figure it all out? Yeah, they're, they're still learning. I know my professor, he's like very old and like he constantly has to ask like the TAs, like, can, can you hear me? Can you see what I'm seeing? Oh. Yeah, it's, it's a learning curve for all of us, I think. Yeah, I was on a meeting yesterday and somebody, I don't know what it was, but the background noise was so bad you couldn't hear anything anything and then everybody just started hanging up and I was like well I don't even know what was said in the meeting and they didn't send anything out you know so now I've got to call them say what's the deal and that you know like it's a lot of follow-up all of that so hey Marie. hello and Natalie I just if you need to unmute yourself the wind was just blowing across your microphone there <laughs> So if you need to unmute yourself, you can, do I need to unmute you or do you, can you do it? Yeah, okay, all right. <laughs> <laughs> all right, oh, Krista, hi. Oh, maybe, yeah, hi. <laughs> hi. <laughs> hey, we're all learning. 
<laughs> yeah, all learning. <laughs> Having so. hard times. So, um, Bree, I'm going to let you lead the way there. Okay. Hey, guys. How are y'all? Good. <laughs> Good. <laughs> um, so, today, we really just were hoping to kind of get everybody connected. Um, I don't know if we have anybody in from schools that are the same. I don't think so. Let me see. No, it kind of looks like everybody's at different schools. So really just trying to connect you guys, um, trying to see if you guys are experiencing any of the same struggles with your online classes. I don't know if some of us are taking upper division level classes and it's we're finding the transition difficult because of that, um, or if we're just used to having our face-to-face -face instruction. So just trying to get some feedback from you guys and see how everybody's doing. Um, for some classes, I would definitely prefer to have face-to-face -face than online, like chemistry and math, because like for my math class, there's really nothing to do other than to read the book, and it's like, what am I supposed to do with the book? <laughs> like, that doesn't help. Yeah. <laughs> um, <clears throat> are you seeing your, um, are you having trouble in the math class, or is it just hard learning math online. I imagine that's pretty difficult for you. It's know. hard learning it online because for that professor specifically, we're not doing any online lectures. It's just like an email saying, hope you did your homework type of thing and we don't turn in that homework. It's just like, you're on your own. Like if you want to do it, you can do it. If you don't, it's, it's on you whenever you take the exam. Yeah. Wow. Wow. That's yeah, <laughs> that's interesting. That's an interesting yeah. take. Um, are any, is anybody else kind of having professors that are kind of like that too, or, or are some of our other professors a little bit more hands-on? Um, I know for uh, my class, um, since two of them were already online, as mentioned, um, my other two, one consists of a lab, which is reproduction, and like we usually have like specimens, like uh, organs, like ovaries or something to look at but yeah that's gonna be hard for me because like we have quizzes based on those labs that we do and mm -hmm. now we have is all we have is just like the lab manual which is it does help but I don't get the full learning benefit like the whole hands-on experience as any other student in previous class oh. so sorry go ahead uh so yeah it's just like people that were in that class learned more than me and so far because like they have hands-on experience like sometimes we visit the farms like last before the spring break we went to the equine center we saw um like semen collection and like how to prepare it and how to um see the um sperm under the mi microscope and like I won't be able to do that with other mm. animals so it's just like I'm missing out on it kind of sucks and they show us videos but i like to see it in person mm -hmm. which is like <laughs> like i get to see i get to ask questions on the spot <clears throat> yeah, that's, interesting. that's a tough piece yeah, yeah. Okay. so um on that like do you know people that have taken the class before that maybe you can connect with them to for help or same with Brisa, you know, people that have taken that class before or maybe another professor in that department that you could help ask or reach out to? Um, the whole Tamuk math department, not the most reliable people. Um, they're very traditional, especially in the math department. So they're like, please come to the lecture because that's your attendance type of thing. So I know whichever professor I reach out to, the professor I have, is probably the best option because he responds to emails like he's willing to work with you but the other professors they don't know how to use an email they don't even use blackboard so it's <laughs> like oh, that sucks. Yeah. it'll be i think something uh as they're starting to hire new professors you guys will be the new professors that are coming on that are going to teach the these old guys how to use technology you're challenging them, but they're new professors. I bet when they hire are going to have to have some sense of how to use technology because otherwise they can't, you know, can't cope. That's going to be part of their 
hiring process. I'm sure. I am sure. So, is anybody just if you guys would write your name in the chat box down at the bottom? There's a chat box. Just write your name and your school you're at. For those of us saying that kind of like our professors are, aren't the best with the technology, are they offering like one-on-one -on -one in, instead of just simply providing our lectures online? Or are there TAs that you're able to Zoom or FaceTime with to kind of get additional instruction? Or is it just kind of like too early to kind of figure some of that stuff out? I've had professor just say, um, if you're having problems, if you need like, I guess additional help, um, send me an email to set up like a Zoom meeting, but like other than that, they're not willing to see you face in face. Yeah. Okay. Okay. It'd be great if you could suggest like to to that math teacher if if they had a piece of paper and somebody could hold the camera over it, you know, or and record it <laughs> on a Zoom call to show how to to solve it or whatever, or a whiteboard. I'm sure a mathematician has a whiteboard in his house somewhere, somehow. But, um, yeah. Or even consider, like, making a YouTube channel specifically for the classes, showing how to do the problems. That could be one way, a suggestion for the professor. That one. <laughs> Although I'm sure at, at 80 or 90 years old, he's like, what? <laughs> I don't think that's going to happen like with the YouTube channel, things like that. Maybe not like our professors have pushed us to reach out to the tutors. So, so far, like that's been difficult because the tutors are getting booked. So there's no way for us to have like a set appointment because once you sign up for an appointment, like it's very hard to get another one because they're trying to reach everybody and there's only so many tutors that can actually work from home. Okay. Does uh, Khan Academy have anything online to at that level? Um, they have some things, but they don't have everything. Um, our professor has sent us like YouTube links of like videos that could help us, but it's not the exact same way that he wants us to do it. So it's more like you have to wait until you take the exam type of thing to know what to expect because like the book and his exams are two different things. And since like now we're going to be taking it online, it's going to be hard for us to show our work because like showing our work was a requirement for the exam. So he doesn't even know how he's going to do the exam now. So it's more like just waiting. I would say though, while you're waiting, like for those classes, Khan Academy, my math in college was actually flipped classrooms. So they didn't do any lectures. It was all working out problems in class and learning on your own. And Khan Academy and um, YouTube, you can find stuff that just helps, even if it's not what you're gonna be doing on the exam or the right kind of work, it can help you figure out how to do the problems like faster, more efficiently, just make a habit with it. It helps to pair with the book with that. And then as you see how he likes you to do it or how he likes your work to look, you can kind of like tailor it more that way. I don't know if that makes sense, but that was, like my math classes in college at least, they were in person, but we had to do all of our lectures online with Khan Academy or with YouTube and then go see him and he would tell us more about how he'd like to see it. He kind of brought them both together. So definitely look at that as a resource if you get to that point that you need an extra resource. Okay. What I would suggest also talking to some of the students, I don't think they're on here yet, but some of them were saying that their um, classes have made group meetings so that they can kind of communicate that way and get help or they may even have their own little Zoom sessions or FaceTime sessions or whatever so that they can kind of teach each other whatever they feel like is missing from the instructor. So that might help too, because sometimes the professor telling you how something works or how something is explained is a lot different and it may sink in a little bit better when it's coming from one of your peers. Okay, anything else on that? No, 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 okay. So where do you guys like to study best or do your online work? Well, I just moved back home yesterday, so I haven't figured that out yet. Okay. Yeah. Ah, uh, hello. 
Bye, Bye. Aniola. Bye. I think I would like, I like to study at the kitchen table. Mm. Yeah, I, I can't be in my bed. <laughs> same, same here. Same here. I either have to go out of the building or at least go out the lobby. But like, I'm, I'm in uh, Huntsville still. I go back home until next week. But um, what I usually do, like, just to stay on, on top of my work Jeez. is just like, um, like I, have, I set up my schedule and then I decide oh, yes. whether to go, where I stay here. Um, but honestly, I cannot stay here because my bed is like next to it. Um, and I get distracted. And so I will have to either go out to the lobby or to the study rooms that we have here in the building. Or either go to the library and, you know, just do my work. Yeah, same boat here. I, I My bed is right next to my study, my desk. So it's like, I look around, I'm like, nope, nope, no, nope, do my work. Yeah. <laughs> so I have to get out of the building. I have to get out of my room to actually do my work. It's a trap. <laughs> <laughs> I think Karen brought up a good point when she said she makes her schedule. Is anybody else kind of trying to keep a schedule that way they have their same routine every day? Or is it just like, oh, I'll wake up when I wake up and then I'll start my homework, whatever that time comes? <laughs> I'm sort of on that mentality right now. <laughs> but I do have a, a calendar to keep me up, um, keep track of the assignments that I do. So, like, if it's nearing, I'll be like, oh, crap, I have to do it. I have to do it now. Otherwise, I'll be cramping up next year. Next year, I mean, next in a couple of days. Because all the assignments are kind of, like, due at the same time. So, it's like, I don't know. <laughs> I think having a calendar is a good thing. Because, like she said, a lot of your um, assignments right now are going to be condensed. I know some of you guys are saying that, oh, our, some, our, our online classes are ending at the end of April, whereas they may be a little bit longer. You might have had your classes a little bit more frequently, you know, two and three times a week. Um, so everything right now is kind of condensed and you have to learn everything within four weeks. That's usually how online classes are. So if you're not used to that, if you haven't taken those online classes, I would suggest getting some type of planner and writing, you know, your due dates, highlighting for different classes or finding a system that works for you so that you're making sure that you're getting your stuff turned in on time. Yeah, and one thing like for me, like um, since I like to schedule like what, what am I going to do during the day, I also like, like decide to break um, each assignment into small portions as well. Um, just so that it's easier for me to, you know, get those things done, um, like before the deadline, but at the same time, I just don't have a lot of, um, a lot of work that will cause me stress. Are y'all, uh, trying to buy for either internet, uh, speed or are, are your, is your family respecting what your time to study? Y'all can be honest. <laughs> I haven't been home, so I can't. I can't. I can't say anything on this. <laughs> I don't know. For me, I'm always fighting with my sister. Like, why are you on the internet? She's like, Well, I have homework too, you know. Same. Same. Yeah. My sister's doing homework right now in my room. <laughs> um, for me, can you hear me? Uh -huh. yeah. Okay, yeah, my classes, they don't start until next week. So at the moment, I'm just trying to organize everything. So I really don't have any, like, scheduled time away from my parents to tell them that I'm trying to study at the moment. But after Friday, so Saturday, that's when I, that's when I told myself that I'm actually going to start doing everything. So I'm just, this is like my last day to just relax and, yeah, so. And Yola, are you home or are you at, uh, back at Cole? I'm, a, I'm home right now, yeah. Okay, okay. Yeah, but I've been stuck inside of the house for the past two weeks. So. <laughs> <laughs> I know for me, since I am back home and I do be at the kitchen table, that my mom, she do sometimes forget, like, oh, I'm on the computer and she'll be talking to me. I'm like, you know, I can't hear you right now. I'm, I'm, I'm on Zoom. And she's like, oh, I forgot, I forgot. I'm sorry. And I'm like, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I think, like, okay so so for me like like once I go back home like I usually like have some time um you know like my mom knows that I, I still have to study but at the same time like I just rather sit on my desk 
on in my study room at home. So yes, yeah, so she knows like the times that I'll be studying or whatever I have class. And honestly, like she she respects that and she she understands that. So I will say that if you know, especially because you've got some older professors that aren't real good with technology. If something happens when you're on a call or if you're on Blackboard or, or whatever, where maybe attendance is counting, just shoot them an email of saying what trouble you had so that you have a paper trail or email trail. So that if at the end of the semester they say, well, you weren't on or, you know, I don't know how, how you didn't connect with me somehow that you have that email trail and you've told them how uh, that you did, you know, like you tried to connect with them. Um, I, I know for me, I mean, it's just Bill and I at home. And the other day I was on a call and it, our internet stopped working. And, you know, I was, I had to call back in and then I had to say, oh, I'm so sorry, I missed half of it. Um, and so it was, it's just really awkward. Um, so then I had to email him to say, hey, you know, can you send me what y'all talked about? Because I have no idea what the discussion is and what, how you're doing that. So an email trail is going to be important. And, and if your grade isn't, um, at the end of the semester, isn't kind of what you think it should be, then you have that to uh, go back and talk to the professor or to the dean and say, hey, look, this is an exception. Because these are extraordinary times. And they're going to have to make some exceptions and and they can't hold it against you because you're home and you don't have the bandwidth you would have had at school but they're also going to be a little bit of stickler and saying well you know how do we know that but if you send an email you'll they'll have a tr record of it Does everybody feel like they've expressed how they feel about their classes and everything? Do we feel like we've shared some good ideas on how we can maybe improve what we're doing in our classes? Or for those of us who haven't started, some ideas on how we can kind of get our steps going and stuff? Well, I'm currently staying over at a friend's house and that's how I've been doing my work. I don't know <laughs> if that works for you guys. I know like if I'm by myself, I'm just like, no, I'm not gonna do it. I'm not gonna do it. But like seeing other people actually do their homework kind of is like, well, I guess it's time to do homework now. <laughs> just so, have that accountability. It's understandable. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Okay, so we're gonna switch gears a little bit. Um, now that we've kind of gotten the discussion part out of the way, we're gonna kind of continue on with a little bit of discussion. Um, but some things kind of like we would do on our Instagram Live, just a couple things we want to touch on. Um, if you guys are home, remind your parents or maybe even just go ahead and check their mail. Um, it is time to do the census to go ahead and reply to that. So the way it works is you'll get something in the mail. It's just a white envelope. You open up the envelope. It's like a bluish piece of paper. Um, they'll give you a code and they have a website for you to go on and fill out all that information. So it's important to get that done. I believe the last day to do it is sometime in April. They prefer it sooner than later. So if you can go ahead and get that in, that would be great. Like I said, you probably not something that your parents are thinking about right now, but something that still needs to be done. Because a lot of things are, you know, funded and things like that through the census. They need to know how many people are in different areas. So if we can go ahead and reply to that, that'd be perfect. Okay. Anything on that, CCC? Any questions about the census? Okay, so I filled that out for my mom yesterday, but there's like this question at the end, like it asks, is there anybody in your home that doesn't like it stays there but doesn't stay there full time? So I was like, hmm, well, that would be me because I go to college and I sleep over there. So I clicked on my name. Was that the correct thing to do? Kathy, correct me if I'm wrong. I believe so, because there should also be something that says like, or you'll put yes, that you're in the house. But then later on, it will ask you, is this person there all the time? Or is there any circumstance where this person leaves? And then I believe there's a mark that'll say that, like, the person goes to college so that the census mm -hmm. knows that that's their permanent residence, but they're actually away during school time. Kathy? Okay. Yeah. So I did fill it out right, just making sure. <laughs> Anything else on the census? 
Okay. Um, so next, I know this is, these are like interesting times. We're not really sure how long this is going to last. Um, but the whole thing of this, one of the things rather, is to just remember that we need to plan ahead. So even though, like I said, we don't know how long this is going to last, it could be over by the summer. So that you could still get that summer internship. You could still get that job. Um, so be sure to still be applying for those different things. I know some of us, we're kind of waiting on um, different career fairs that were going to be happening this semester. Um, so maybe if you want to reach out to the career services, go to their website or simply just certain companies that you think you'll be interested in working for after graduation, internships are really good way to determine if that would be a good fit for you. So apply for those. Um, there's also Hire Houston Youth, especially since you'll be here in Houston as of right now at least. Um, you can apply to those. There's different types of organizations. There's nonprofit. So of course CCC is one of the um, organizations that you can work for under the nonprofit side, but there's also private corporations um, and city of Houston um, positions as well. And I believe they've pushed back their deadlines on some of those applications because of everything going on. So be sure to kind of go to hirehoustonyouth.org to kind of see about that. And we'll send more information about that through text and email. Yeah, Brie, the um, noon deadline um, for Hire Houston Youth is now pushed back to April 10th. So you guys have um, plenty of time to go ahead and do that application for that, for summer, at least. And of course, if you need any um, letters of recommendation, any references or anything like that, we are more than welcome to be that person for you. Um, the best <laughs> thing to do, especially if you're going to put someone's name on like an, a resume or an application or something like that, is to email them and let them know. That way, if they do get a phone call, that that person is anticipating that phone call and they know kind of what to say and they're not caught off guard. So if you do happen to use us, just send us an email, send us a text so that we have record of that and we can kind of expect that phone call or email. And I, I think we're going to touch on this too, but if, because you don't have a career center around right now, um, LinkedIn is a great place to look at that at, for those things. So you can do LinkedIn to all of us. Uh, you can find us and, and just send a, a request to be friends or I don't know, professional acquaintances. I don't know what it is on there. But um, so if you link to me, then, and I'm linked to Bill, then you can see a bunch of engineers, you know, like you can have that connection there, or you have a lot of other connections. If you link to Bree or to Natalie or, or, or Deja, you have all those other connections that can then lead on to different, um, just even saying, hey, I saw that you are friends with um, Carla, and I'd like, you know, would you be interested in an informational interview? And then you can do it online, either Zoom or just by chatting back and forth. And then you can, after you've kind of established that uh, introduction piece to it, and you've asked them some questions, then you can say, you know, do you happen to know of any internships? And we can send you some informational uh, interview type questions you can ask if you want those. But LinkedIn is a great place. I've gotten two things this week on LinkedIn to ask me to do some different things that, and I don't, I really don't check LinkedIn very much. Um, so, uh, you know, it's a great place to start. So I'll be waiting for all your connections there, right? <laughs> Y'all have any? Have any of you guys used LinkedIn or are y'all just now getting into it? Where are we kind of with LinkedIn with everybody so far? I have a profile, but I haven't used it much. But I do know that, like, if I ever need a job, it's right there. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Yeah. So LinkedIn will be a good thing to do for that. Like Kathy said, just even, even if you don't necessarily reach out to anybody right now, or even if you may be a freshman or sophomore, making those connections early are really good. You know, having, allowing somebody to kind of see your growth academically and professionally is going to be really great and beneficial when it comes to getting internships and jobs. Okay. All right. So um, on the school piece, I guess, 
going next to that. Um, if any of us are experiencing like any type of financial aid difficulties, if we're having issues um, trying to figure out how we're going to pay for different things, you can reach out to your financial aid office. A lot of different schools are having some type of emergency aid student fund. Um, they may be called different things. They may be funded different ways. There may be an application for some. It really will just kind of depend on how each school and each financial aid office decides to do it and how their funds permit. Um, but I would definitely reach out to them. I would say phone or email. Some of them may have been able to forward a phone number or a phone um, in from their office before everything got crazy. Um, if you try calling and after a while they don't answer, after a day or two they don't answer, definitely try sending a follow-up email. Um, and actually I would probably send the email anyway, just so there's some kind of paper trail. That way if anything happens later on in the future in the fall or something, you have record that you tried to reach out but didn't hear back or that there wasn't funds at the time, okay? Um, are there any other resources in different parts of the city? I know we may be kind of all over, but if there are any different resources that you may hear about in your community, um, please reach out to us so that we can kind of disseminate that information amongst everyone. Um, I know people are kind of dealing with different things. Some parents may be losing jobs right now. Students may be losing jobs, so if you guys need anything, let us know. We'll try to point you guys in the right direction and give you guys the different resources you may need. Yeah, and with speaking of resources, um, I don't know if you guys are like following your um, school on Instagram and Facebook. Um, since now that everyone is social distancing, they're posting a lot of resources on their website as well, as well as Instagram and Facebook. So sometimes you can go to that Instagram and like I said, they'll post things and that way you can stay up to date with that as well. Like I know TSU posted that they're having online tutorials. I'm not sure if that's all the schools, but like I said, it's good to just follow them. That way, if you miss the email, they're posting everything on their social media. Yes. Yeah, speaking of, oh, go ahead. Yes, thanks, Deja. Speaking of that, like I, when I um, am on Twitter, I am seeing a lot of different, like high schools at least. I don't know how their different colleges are doing it or if it's for the whole community, but there are different parts of the city, different pockets are having like food pickups and things like that. I know there was some issues with that. I think Kathy was telling us the other day, um, but there's different resources out there for you guys if and where you need it, you just have to look for it. Yeah, so we're gonna try and do a, a um, kind of this kind of meeting with parents if y'all, your parents wanna jump on because there's a bunch of resources out there. Like HISD stopped serving food because one of the, um, workers uh, contracted the virus and so they just shut everything down. Um, they left it to the city of Houston who's reaching out madly to all these nonprofits. Um, and so the, the food insecurity, um, money, um, just you know resources like toilet paper and stuff. Um, there's some different things uh, that can happen. So we're going to talk to them. Uh, I think we're going to try this weekend Maybe Gladys, we'll send that out. Um, but it is it is a concern. Um, the other thing that's supposed to be happening now that the stimulus bill has all passed is that if you make less than um, a certain amount of money and if you have um, filed taxes or you have a social security number on file, then you you and your parents should be getting some kind of check in April that's still a couple weeks off if you're struggling. So that's not, you know, you need to do something. But if, if you get that check, um, if you can, so each child is supposed to get $500. So if you can save something out of that $500, if, if you can save even $50 and put it in your account or pay off a, uh, the interest on a student loan, then that will help you also in the long run because um, it's going it, to, it's going to be a struggle for a while. So that money, um, is definitely there to help you and your living expenses. But if you can, you know, have that discussion with your parents ahead of time about what you're going to do as that money comes in, um, and how you can make that stretch and maybe use some of it for college. So. 
any questions about resources that anyone thinks they may need right now or if you guys want to um, chat anyone privately to ask about those resources feel free like I said at least we can we may not have it on hand right now but we'll be able to like take note of that and then give you that information when we get it so feel free to do that if you need it um, Another thing that we've heard about, uh, I don't know if you guys have heard about it, but if you, of course, you know, you're at school, you have all this stuff at school, your parents might have given your room to your little sister, or they might have used it for something else now. So you might not have that space that you once had to kind of hold your stuff. Um, so U-Haul is offering 30 days free storage for college students. You have to make an account probably where they'll verify um, your student email address to make sure it has like a .edu. So you'll um, do that. If you need us to send that information, well, we will send that information. If you guys need it, feel free to use it. Um, but that's just something that is available for you guys if you need it. Or if you're off at school and they're telling you, you know, hey, you got to be out of the dorms by this time. Um, I believe they even offer some type of assistance with getting the furniture from your home to a specific U-Haul location. So for that, you will just need your um, college ID for that. And you have to be a new um, customer. So you can't already have an account. You have to be a new customer and have your college ID. So that way they can determine if, you know. Um, and then lastly, what we kind of want to discuss is social distancing. And obviously, um, I know a lot of people Hello. <laughs> can y'all hear me? Hello. Yeah, we can hear you. Okay, sorry, there was something going yeah. on. I didn't know if I was okay. Um, but the last thing we want to talk about is social distancing. So yes, you know, a lot of us may think like, oh, it's not that serious. It's only serious for certain people in certain age groups and things like that. Um, as we've heard on new on the news and in different articles and videos and all that, like the whole point of this is to flatten the curve, to not share our germs, not, you know, it's an airborne disease. So talking, laughing, breathing on each other is not good. Um, so making sure that we're social distancing. I know we want to hang out with our friends, but there's ways to do that. Of course, it's 2020 at this point. We can FaceTime, we can video chat, we can do all these different things. If you wanna see a bunch of different friends, FaceTime has group FaceTime now, so there's different ways to feel like you're with your friends and in a group without actually doing that. So let's just be mindful um, of that, just because we want to hopefully get this over with sooner than, you know, expected. And what's going to help us do that is, is the whole social distancing. Anyone else have anything on social distancing or on anything that we've kind of talked about today? Um, <clears throat> you mentioned the emergency aids. Um, what if like you're like, okay, uh, we need a loan. Which type of loan would it be to take out? Which, Which loan would I like to take out? <clears throat> If they give you the choice, you're so like with your um, financial aid packages, you're always going to use the subsidized. But the thing is, it depends on where the money's coming from. So unless Kathy, you may be able to ha um, answer it a little bit deeper. But from what I would understand, it kind of depends on where the money's coming from. So it may be from donors, it may be from alumni. So it might not be a loan. It may be them kind of more deciding you need emergency funds, but if it is a loan and they give you the um, option between like a subsidized or unsubsidized, if it does come from the government, you're going to choose the subsidized. Okay. But of course, when it comes to taking out any type of loan or um, if you do decide to inquire about the emergency funds with your school, they're probably going to have you sign some type of paperwork, a contract or something. As always, read that information in depth. Um, don't just sign it, click whatever they send you on your um, financial aid portal and send it in. Make sure that you're actually reading the terms and conditions. And if you need help or if you're unsure, feel free to give us your login and we can kind of go in and look over it for you before you accept it. Okay, that works. Anything else? Natalie, Deja, Gladys, Kathy. Remember to always wash your hands with warm water, everyone. <laughs> That's an important thing to remember. Please. 
Yeah, no, um, I think it's just an adjustment for everyone. So um, you all have been doing great with, you know, keeping up with your professors. So just keeping up with that and getting those planners so you can, you know, schedule everything out and just staying up to date, you'll be fine. But like I said, it is an adjustment for everyone, but you guys have us. So feel free to always contact us if you need any encouragement or just any questions. Because like I said, and it's an adjustment and we don't know how long this will be. So. And of course, on your downtime, along with Hire Houston Youth and looking for those internship opportunities, definitely still continue to find scholarship opportunities as well. And even if some of those scholarships ask like, oh, what's something that you endured that's a struggle, y'all can definitely write about this experience. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think you guys calling in shows that y'all are staying on top of everything. So you guys are doing really good with all of that. But yeah, just keeping in mind that it's important to stay on top of things, stay on top of assignments. Um, I know that can be hard at home sometimes. So if you can try to do that, remind yourself every day, maybe make a routine. I still wake up and take a long shower and get ready every day, even though I see zero people. So just trying to keep a routine so when you go back, it'll be easier to get back into it too. So uh, do you all kind of, we did this at two. Um, would it, is there a different time, a better time to do this? Uh, call so you think more people would be on it? I'm okay with this time. Uh, it works perfectly fine. Um, later on seems good too, honestly. Yeah, for me, it's also in the day. More time, Karen. What was that? Okay, with me, with this time. Okay. Okay. Yeah. What does y'all this time kind of look like? Do y'all have classes on Fridays or do most of your professors leave that for Monday through Thursday or do you have Friday mornings? What does that look like? I know it might be different, but I have class. I do have class. I'm sorry. <laughs> oh, but um, I do have class. <laughs> um I have classes only Tuesday and Thursday, so I have a lot of free time. <laughs> okay. So we may, we may play with the time a little bit. Two o'clock uh, didn't do the best. We may try at 2.30 or 3 o'clock next week. Um, Next week, we're going to continue kind of talking to you guys, having it more of a discussion-based thing. Hopefully, next week, we can kind of show the screen and have you guys um, just see some of the notes that we're taking, because we're going to send you guys some notes after this. So we'll do that. But next week, we're going to kind of just discuss things that we can kind of do to stay sane through all of this. So if you guys have certain um, activities that you do, if you guys like to read with all of your free time, or listen to podcasts or playlists or different things like that we can kind of discuss some of the different things that everyone's doing to kind of stay safe stay sane and kind of keep moving towards our goals sound good yes that sounds good <laughs> <laughs> oh my god you guys i'm having such a trouble with my internet <laughs> <laughs> now i can't make it go off my phone sorry if you're on your phone, just keep swiping to the right till you get to like the far. Well, she kind of figured it out. <laughs> and I'm I'll I'll put it at a different place. <laughs> I hate it. I hate technology and yeah, I love it. So did anybody have anything else? Any of the college students, anybody from CCC? I know everyone's kind of had their little thing, but Kathy, if anybody has anything else, that's really all I had for today. Thank you guys so much. <laughs> oh, sorry. <laughs> Bye. <laughs> <laughs>